So I'll start with uh, reading my, why don't you read my wish? Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Do not shirk your responsibilities. Attend faithfully to the worldly duties, but keep always in back of your mind that all this is Baba's. When you feel happy, think Baba wants me to be happy. When you suffer, think Baba wants me to suffer. Be resigned to every situation and think honestly and sincerely, Baba has placed me in this situation. With the understanding that Baba is in everyone, try to help and serve others. I say with my divine authority to each and all that whosoever takes my name at the time of breaking his last, breathing his last, comes to me. So, so do not forget to remember me in your last moments. Unless you start remembering me from now on, it will be difficult for to remember me when you end when your end approaches you should start practicing from now on even if you take my name only once every day you will not forget to remember me in your dying moments avatar meher baba ki jai avatar meher baba ki jai i think that last two lines are what uh, is the giver of hope right even if you take my yes. name only once every day you will not Correct. forget to remember me in your dying moments. So with that <laughs> in mind, we will still try to get to the goal of having his name on our lips uh, every minute. Yes. Right? It's like, so, it's like divine divinity offered so cheap to us, actually. So easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so much less effort, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, and, yes, uh, yes. And, and actually, still Baba, we are skeptical. I, uh, yeah, Baba has also said when you sleep in the night, for a one minute, you remember me. I think that is, I, I've never done it actually. Uh, I just remember, I'm mean, sleeping just like that, think about Baba, not not in a formal way. I'm just trying, mm -hmm. I've started doing it for last three, four days. That actually is very effective. Nice. It's very effective actually. Your, I, is, I uh, don't do it as well, to be honest. Yeah, try, try actually. Yes. I have just started, I am started preaching already. But <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> no, no, so the best way of uh, putting pressure on oneself is publishing a pact, right? So I'll correct, ask correct. you after 15 days, are you still doing it, Sanjay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's correct. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, some progress on uh, Stay With God. Uh, if you recollect, we had marked out a few, few lines which uh, we wanted to... Uh, which we were not sure what it means, right? And yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and thought uh, I found uh, some time with. Uh, okay, Mama Ji is calling. Just hold on one second. I'll put you on mute. Sure, sure. Okay, there's some confusion. Um, Soma, Ravi, and uh, Mamaji are on are on another link. I don't know which one. So uh, I've just shared this now, and probably they'll be here in a minute, which is good because I wanted to do these clarifications when more of us are there. So let's give it a minute for yeah, them to join on this new link. Yeah. So I can't. I have uh, joined. Not, I don't. Uh, I oh, have you joined. Have? I love to okay. help the others. Out. How do I do it? Uh, I okay. put it on the group, so I'll again ah. 
send another message ravi are you able Swayka. to hear me ha ah, yes ravi. send a new link uh, in the uh, telegram chat box so soma and yourself please link from there wow oh so oh, oh. okay yes. soma so, ravi doesn't have telegram Okay, so much side. So let me send this to uh, Ravi on WhatsApp. Hold on, WhatsApp, Ravi sent. Okay, so sent. Uh, let's give it a minute for both of them to come, and then we can continue. So I don't know. Did I mess up with the link? It's the same pin link, right? Yes. Uh, no. The now in the Telegram there is no pinned link. Oh, somebody unpinned it because I don't know. Okay. I don't know what happened. Okay. <laughs> okay. So maybe for the next. And the link even... that I use for our uh, Monday to Friday, Lord Mayor, uh, seems to be a different one. That's what we opened today, and then we joined. Ah, okay. So using Acumen link, maybe. maybe. So using the old old Acumen link, it's still alive. Oh. But then I want oh. to move the. To, so Meher Baba Avengers has its own domain, its own paid account now. What we are on. Okay. Uh, our own paid account. I'm paying for this uh, service. Uh, ah. So that we are independent of any uh, uh, linkages to any other domain. The other meeting is deleted, so maybe the link works. Ah. So I'll I'll probably go and see if I can kill that link so that people at least okay. can't connect. Okay. You can use this anytime. This is, in fact, who are okay. conversant with ad, uh, administration of these. I'm happy to share the password. You can do oh. all the activities as well because this is paid for and it's just for this purpose. So uh, you can use this meeting for any any time during the week, uh, not just for Lord Mayor readings, but any time you want uh, uh, a scheduled session with anybody <laughs> with recording and uh, broadcast. Feel okay. free to use this. Just okay. reach out Jai and Baba. I can help set it up. Jai Baba Soma. Uh, so we have a, we have everybody back on uh, now. Actually, <laughs> it was just me. And stroke seven thirty, I was like, okay, so this is going to be the first time there's nobody other than me. And then <laughs> ping came Sanjay, okay. ping came Sanjay ji, and then I said, great. Uh, we just started with uh, uh, reading the my wish, and uh, that's when I got your call. And thankfully, I received. Otherwise, I, I would have generally uh, thought I, I knew it was something to do with connectivity. All right, so. Uh, a bit of a delayed start, but I'm glad uh, we have more people than uh, we started with. The reason is I did a chat with uh, 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 found out more about these uh, doubts that we had marked out, if you remember. So we'll take those up first. But here's the interesting part. Uh, we forgot as a group to go back to notes. So. Uh, most of these things are covered well in the notes. So let's go to notes, right? Do you remember the notes, the Tilopa, Naropa, and all that? We got, yeah, got yeah. through notes. Yeah, so we just gave up, and it, there's no footnoting in the main pages. So we've just been going through without uh, uh, understanding that. So we will now do this painstakingly back and forth so that we are in sync. So the first one is the 50 year reference that was there. So uh, that's page 32, 29. Oh, okay, so 32 doesn't have that. Yeah, so this is the next reference. Uh, I'll, I'll read the note now and then we'll go back to the text. So if you, uh, if you recollect one of the lines we had marked this, let me be one day full fed and one day hungry is what Francis says, but the quotation is actually Muhammad. So Muhammad has said, let me be one day full fed. And uh, that was when God offered him all the riches that a man can desire, right? So now let's go back to 32. Um, 
2022. By the way, uh, I sent some references your way this week. Has anybody listened to that Australia uh, set of videos uh, of what parks on Savitgard? I actually sent a specific reference even for the Greek stuff. So I don't know if anybody uh, found some time to listen to it. That whole series is actually very nice. I'm I'm about 80, 90% done. Uh, I should be done uh, all the way. But it's a good primer because it's uh, this Mehrabad one stopped abruptly, right? So uh, Naman is at, in Comunicado. We'll go catch him and we go to Mehrabad for Silence Day. Uh, but uh, we've not got uh, updates on what happened after the seven videos uh, that Water Parks put out in 2021. So anyway, so longing for the 50 years age flight and the begging bowl and the road. So now let's see what uh, his comments are. So his comments are different faiths have different calendars and Sufis have a calendar where he says that at the age 50, you are supposed to become a recluse. Now. This is a reference like, I think in some Puranic or Vedic forms, you have the uh, var, uh, uh, ashramas, right? So you have the grahastha and then followed by sannyas. So something like that, at the 50th year, you become a recluse. So what he is referring to here is that, uh, is that fakiri. So uh, fakiri is the term used by the Sufis and it refers to uh, uh, re renouncing your normal life and going down to a path of uh, beggary so you live just by arms. And second, you are always on the road. So you're all also homeless. So that's true definition of Fakiri, right? So that's the first explanation. And then, uh, yeah, so he said um, what he said on the 2000 years. Uh, we were wondering when we read this part where he talks about the Baba's travels. Why did he specifically say 2000 years? And the explanation he had was uh, not specific to the 2000 years. But he says that uh, uh, this is a message that he gave uh, when he had uh, um, uh, seclusion slash meditation. Baba had a seclusion slash meditation in a cave near Raipur. And, uh, uh, and then uh, the, about this, there is a message on the blue bus, which is there in Mehrazad. So those of us who will physically be there in a couple of weeks, we'll probably share that. Uh, let's remember to check it out on the door of the uh, blue bus. So those of you who remember, that's the blue bus that's restored and kept uh, in Narada. So that's the second doubt. So this, he said, is just poetic usage. Ladder rung is, is uh, in fact, the uh, interpretation he gave was uh, in, in the way uh, we climb the ladder and um, kick away or climb over others uh, in a way betraying them, right? So that's what he interpreted this to be. The ladder rung poor. So this is the para where he uses this poor as uh, brother poor, most poor, baba poor. So in the ladder rung poor, he says this is the nature of betrayal where you actually betray, uh, uh, betray uh, I mean, stamp over others and make your progress. And then you have, uh, yeah, this is this is what we saw in the notes, right? So it's Prophet Muhammad's statement, uh, which is, let me be one day full fed and next day hungry, I. So uh, this is, uh, the, uh, the quote is from there. So, so this, there's so much depth to this that it's unbelievable, right, this uh, book. So... Uh, and here we are thinking we we made some good progress and understood this. So those are, I think, all the things. He agrees that this is Shamsuddin, Shamsay Tabriz, of uh, the disciple of uh, Jalaluddin Rumi. And yeah, so yeah, I think uh, for this, he did not have anything uh, specific. Uh, uh, and yeah, again, he said that uh, there's no specific, I mean, uh, it's it's what we figured as well, right? The 28 years since the time he made his announcement, since the establishment of his perfection. So the 28 years that would have elapsed when 
Francis was tasked with writing the book, right? So that's the period. And uh, yeah, I think I didn't ask him about Angiras. Yeah, that, that's all we had. So let's just quickly look at the notes and see if there's anything we are missing. So by the way, where are we now in our reading? So we are on page 47. So let's just go from the Muhammad court to all the notes <coughs> to 47 back and forth. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> to make it easy, let me do something which I should have done before. Just give me one, one minute. Any thoughts, any reactions to Tota's comments as we uh, uh, are waiting? Uh, those connections to Mahmud's story, we didn't know. Uh, so it was exactly like so clarity. Yeah, yeah and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's there in the uh, what do you call uh, um, notes, and we missed it. So okay. uh, I, okay. yeah. So I'm just doing something that will make our journey a little easier. So I'm just opening a copy of the same book because uh, you can't do uh, back and forth easily without that. So I'm calling this notes. It's in the same folder. So we can use this as a reference and keep it open so that it's easier and we uh, don't lose track of it, right? So let me favorite it so that I open it every time. And we were... Ah, so we were at 33. So let's go to 33 here. Okay. So this is the ladder rung for, and let me be one day full fed, next day hungry, one day in his ineffable, ineffable beyondness, the next day in his descentness, right? So uh, the, the hungry part is his descentness. So after that, the next note is on 3324. I am as one dot, dot, dot again. That's again a quote of uh, Muhammad. So let's see where that is. It should be here. I am as one. So that is 33, 3324, where is that? Is there a page problem here? Yes, page and uh, verse, I think, number. Problem. Yeah, correct. But then uh, 3322 is let me be one day full fed. That is here, 22. So this is 23, but there's no 24 on 33, right? Oh. Interesting. So we'll ignore that. But basically, it's a quote of uh, Muhammad. Let me be one day full fed dot 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 said by Muhammad to God when God uh, offered uh, him all the riches that a man can desire. Uh, OK, but we saw something on man and riches in 3322. Amazon unknown eight or two. Uh, oh. Is it above by any chance? No. Okay. So we'll go to the next one. 34.1. For the details this, of this period work, see the Wayfarers by Donkin, Mahar Publications, Nagar. This book is a magnificent piece of careful documentation. It's the only book of its kind. This is the one on uh, the musts, and we talked about it. So, yeah. So this is what he's talking. Your work had been the children of the world. He's talking about the musts. So, Francis is pointing out that uh, the best source is uh, Wayfarers. Then we go to 34.8, the conclusion of the Trojan War and the return of the Odysseus and his men. For this section, see Odyssey. So that's what, so that's Greek uh, history. This is again Greek history, the giant's cave, the giant Polyphemus who killed and ate a number of Odysseus companions when he, when he put ashore on the island where Polyphemus lived and whom Odysseus 
overcame and escaped by blinding him. So if you recollect, there was something about uh, one eye or uh, must be Odysseus uh, here. But Odysseus answered, when you turn to this guy, and the unwants that to me. So uh, there's something about the eye as well. Which I remember reading. Okay, anyway, that's uh, Greek, and I don't want to spend too much time on the notes, but let's keep abreast going forward. So he's referring to Aeolus, the king of the islands of music. Tantra is mentioned in 3413. Remember uh, Tantra of Circe, right? He uses the word Tantra of Circe. Yeah, there it is. Tantra of Circe. Aeolus is mentioned here, master of winds. And then there's Tantra of Circe. Now, uh, if we go back here, a meditative method of practice in which the physical form of the desire which is to be mastered is itself used. Obviously, its success depends on absolute honesty of purpose and obtaining a right guide in the master in the matter. Lack of these two requisites naturally leads to further enmeshment in the particular desire. Circe is a goddess who lived on another island where Odysseus put ashore. I think somebody needs to mute. And by whose wiles Odysseus men were turned into swine, but through whom Odysseus obtained mastery and emerged gloriously. So he used the relationship with Circe, who, who all the others were used, uh, uh, I mean, who just succumbed to the desire. He used it in a positive way, in the Tantra way, and used it as a a practice that helps him rather than debilitates him. That's, I think, the reference to Tantra of Circe. So let's just read this one line. Or have left the harbor of men, having brought the war to a successful conclusion, and set sail for home over the trackless sea. Some are detained in that land whose fruits contain forgetfulness. Some sit in the giant's cave, plotting his blinding. This is what we I was referring to. So that's the one eye uh, uh, going away and their escape. Some are being royally feasted by Aeolus, master of winds and music. So that's the reference to the Greek god Aeolus. Some are engaged in mastering the Tantra of Circe, and some have arrived at the island of King Alcinius, provider of winged ships. So King Alcinius is the ruler of the last island Odysseus reached alone and whose men carried Odysseus on his last stage to his native land in one night. So then you have uh, messenger Hermes. He's a messenger of the gods. Refers to, okay, 35. We'll just check. Uh, Hermes, Tantra, 30, 18. Okay, maybe I'll do some work uh, uh, linking these two things or using some coloration so that it's useful for future readers. 35.1 refers to the subtle planes of consciousness, which must be way, uh, which must be crossed on the way to the truth. I don't think we had a doubt there. May enter. This is 35.1, right? I think there's surely there's some pagination problem because here is there a reference to the conscious uh, le levels of consciousness are plainly written from lesser war and pride, class and accompaniment, the kind of master again, wherein them through the victory and reward, feel more and rather bad of late, is it permission sons, which yes, I'm not able to match it to what 35 1 is talking about. So we'll just read the notes. 35 8, Tukaram, a perfect master in Maharashtra in the seventh century, he explained once to his wife that the easiest way to get God, get to God was to open the doors of one's house for anyone to take. Yeah, so if you remember, there was reference to uh, a village which didn't have doors that were locked. And we were wondering why that happened. So he explained once to his wife that the easiest way to get to God was to open the doors of one's house for anyone to take what he liked, to literally take no thought about tomorrow, and to continuously repeat the name of God. She followed his advice, but on the second day, feeling extremely hungry, went to the tem temple and complained to Krishna, who gave her some gold coins. On one occasion, a farmer made a bargain with Tukaram that Tukaram might as well sit in the middle of his field of ripening wheat and do his repetitions of the name of God, and at the same time, 
uh, mined the birds, in return for which the which service the farmer would give him a portion of the harvest. Tukaram took the job, uh, took the job on, and sitting on a raised seat, repeatedly repeated loudly all day the name of God. And when the birds came, said to them, "Eat your fill, little ones, for this food is provided for you by God. But you must not take any away with you. You must also, you also must not provide for tomorrow." When the farmer came and found there was no crop to harvest, he hauled Tukaram to court. Tukaram said he had only done what he had bargained to do, mind the birds. The court adjourned to inspect the field, and lo, every year was busting with grain. The court ruled that all grain over and above the field's average yield belonged to Tukaram. Tukaram quickly re replied, no, no, you cannot do that to me. I've had enough trouble from this business already, let alone having the fresh uh, trouble of having all this wheat. To the reader, who, while appreciating the Franciscan flavor of the situation, asks, but how does a Tukaram eat? A man must either own or work or beg. The answer is he eats whatever is offered to him for that day and accepts no provision. If nothing is offered, he does not eat. It's as simple as that. He never asks. This is the only true Christian position for anyone who accepts Christ as his master. Unless he accepts begging as a discipline in humility, as St. Francis did. For life of Tukaram and other friends of God of this period, see the volumes of Poet Saints of Maharashtra, translated by Justin E. Abbott. For those interested in the political background, see The Grand Rebel by Dennis Kincaid Collins. Okay, so this is also confirmed right here. Shamshuddin is the same as Shams A. Tabriz. Okay, so an, uh, another quick thought here. So if you understand the themes and the way he brings out the themes in relation to the avatar, uh, um, Christ is always associated with poverty by Francis. And what's associated for uh, uh, Muhammad, if anybody? But Muhammad is always associated with democracy. So he keeps saying, men as equals, men brought together and learned to live together. So these are the themes that he brings out for these two avatars over and over again. And this paragraph, especially around the Franciscan part and uh, how he links Tukaram to it, is again a uh, 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 summarization which points in that direction. Odin is a name we saw, again, Greek mythology, in actually the Norse mythology the king of the gods, when the price of one of his eyes was demanded for knowledge, he paid it immediately. Kullervo, okay, we've not got that. Where, where are we, anybody? Which page are we on? Oh, we are much, we are 47. So we have finished Kullervo. One of the heroes in Finnish epic, Kalevela. And Gorgon in Greek mythology, a frightful creature, the sight of whom turned one into stone. Ace, Timodius, Greek hero in the Trojan War. Bran, an early Irish hero who met his death fighting the sea. Achilles, his favorite. Achilles, in fact, uh, I was listening to uh, Ward Parks in the other books, right? Achilles comes back again and again, right? So Achilles is a favorite hero that uh, uh, Francis loves. He, he's a fighter who fought for the right causes and he, he loves it. The greatest champion of the Greeks, it is strange that his withdrawal from the conflict is generally interpreted as sulking because the king Agamemnon, 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 let me try again, Agamemnon, pinched his girlfriend when in the context of Homer, it is clearly a withdrawal of power by he who is bright and glorious. So again, by he who is bright and glorious. But he was the best warrior as uh, accepted by all of history. Uh, Hera, somebody needs to mute. I'm hearing notifications. Hera, concert of Zeus, fire when the river Scamander choked with the bodies of those who fell before Achilles, turned its waters against him and was threatening to overwhelm him. Hephaestus, the heavenly worker in metals and master of fire at the behest of Hera, sent fire against the river. See Iliad. So this is from the second of uh, Homer's books. Uh, no, the first of so Homer's books, Iliad, and the chapter reference is uh, 21. 35, 29, 6 ascending planes. I don't think we have a doubt there. 36, 18. I am as a man 
rides on again. That's again a quote from Mohammed. I, I think we missed that. Uh, 36, 18. Let's quickly see if we are able to find it. Okay, this is inefficient. So <laughs> I am inefficient. So let's leave it alone. 36 for it is mostly slash dash dash love God intended in reference to love in its full and real sense. In its widest sense, all men love God. All men love someone, even if it is only themselves. And all ones, including one's own, own self, one is off from, by, and is God. All songs are to Brahman. It is, however, practically only in India that real lovers, ones who have literally and absolutely abandoned all for love, exist in this age. That's interesting. 36, 20, 29, now God as a man, but suffered the roads to them. Compared the apparent lack of omniscience and the obvious non-use of it in Meher Baba's journey. So exactly. So uh, 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 described deep in detail in the Wayfarers with apparently aimless wanderings and reasonless actions of Jesus according to the Gospels. So then 37, Elo Kazel, Chinese equivalent. This, this is where he talks about the buildings and he mentions the Elo Kazel. Uh, then Moinuddin Chisti, perfect master of the 12th to the 13th centuries. Nanak, founder of the Sikh religion. On his passing, both Hindus and Muslims claimed his body. Uh, beautiful history of uh, Nanak and uh, his uh, life. Charge man. Okay, so this is the reference to the charge man in the US travels, right? He's, he talks about uh, his global travels and he says a charge man in the US and a charge man in Rome or Italy. Uh, one who has the charge or real well-being of the people in an area, God functions or truth manifests on each plane through the form of that plane. On the mental planes, he manifests as the divine beloved. Only the saints know what sort of a form that is. On the subtle planes, he may manifest as light, music and perfume. Uh, on the physical plane, as a perfect man, a perfect master. The understanding of the being and function of the perfect master renders images, whether Christian or Hindu, unnecessary and shows prayer to an absolute or abstract God, as in Protestant faiths, Christian or Hindu to be absurd, as absurd as one standing with one's mouth open in a drought expecting water instead of going to a tap which is connected to a reservoir or sitting in one's room at night making passes in the air for light instead of switching on current from a powerhouse. References uh, to Sagun versus uh, Nirgun and uh, Protestant, uh, uh, I, I mean, there's a reference to the form that's uh, focused on by the uh, Catholics, which is not done by the Protestants. The perfect master in this figure is the totality of water and power, which feeds the reservoir and powerhouses of the saints and charge men. Hence, it is said, one moment in the company of a saint is equal to a hundred years of penances and prayers. And one glance or touch from a perfect master can give one realization. Permanent identity of God as being no one but God as being nothing other than truth. An impossible pill for those who like playing ostrich, uh, but an amazing challenge to those who put truth before dreams. The other thing about these notes, I think, uh, they're very, very abstract and not uh, prose like so it's literally like peop uh, he's written notes which are uh, which are just put there right they're not grammatically built out with a subject predicate structure right anyway that's me nitpicking 41 manas sarovar also his favorite looks like another poetry as such exactly that's what i'm saying so it's very complex <laughs> so if you look at the previous paragraph it's pretty pretty complex so uh it's interesting but respect Francis. Uh, again, a team of um, Francis, a lake at the foot of Kailas. We saw it appear twice already in the book one with the reference to Hamsa and the second in page 41. Literally the lake of the mind in Hindu mythology, the lake over which the swan Hamsa soul circles gazing at its image in the water. 
I had a doubt on this term Paramahamsa and the use of Hamsa in the Ramakrishna mission logo and all that. I mean, probably a good question to ask. Any thoughts on what, what is the reference to the medical Hamsa there? Is it something to do with uh, the uh, ability to separate water from milk? Somewhere vaguely I remember that there was a mythical swan that could do that. And that reference is to uh, uh, separation of duality and uh, the correct viveka that we need to target to get. Mamaji, you are the expert. No response. No problem. Hamsa is Thank also Hamsa no, no. is also a symbol of detachment, actually. Being in the world and not uh -huh. being of it. So okay. he is in the water, but uh, just uh, just enough for him to, you know, use the water oh, just, just stay uh, enough for above. him to float. Okay. Stay up, stay above. Like uh, lotus, uh -huh. I think that's... Uh, lotus yeah, is also lotus a similar simile, yeah, actually. Same thing. Yes, 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 I think Hamsa is also similar, at least. That's what I think. At least. It's like... <laughs> Uh, that yeah. is one story that Hamsa used to take only the milk out of the mixture of water and milk. Yeah, that is one reference. I really remember. Yes, yeah. yes. That's, that's true, I think. Okay. Mythical swan, not all swans, but yes. yeah, some yes, swans. Yes, yeah. Kabir, Kabir has used the soup, the you know, the uh, what you made out of cane to you know clean your uh, grains. You know, uh -huh. it keeps the grain inside and the yeah the yeah chaff yeah the sharp sharp so, super yeah, yeah, yeah. super yeah uh -huh. so Kabir has used super in the same sense I I think yeah uh -huh. okay or the or, yeah or uh, uh, sugar making process the jaggery you know you heat it mm -hmm. up and the trash comes out uh, the scrum is thrown away so these are the simil similes actually from the real life I think yeah very true thank you. 42 is again uh, Iliad. Automedon is one of the heroes in the Iliad. Mastani is a female must. Jitana is a gypsy. Must is pronounced M U S T. Must. Mastani is Mastani. Uh, Vino, we remember it was referred to with music. So, Vino is a stringed instrument having a very rich and subtle tone. Uh, 43. Two is a reference to the flood of the river Godavari. Godavari's flood, the river Godavari. There's an amusing angle to this incident. Vali Ji, which is an affectionate form of Vali, a saint, was himself caught in the flood and had to wade through it to high ground. So one of the Valis at that time. Uh, there was a, uh, I think this was in the uh, hit list of uh, uh, Valis and uh, musts that he calls out. And there was a must, I think, in uh, Hyderabad, he refers to. Vinoba, name of Krishna, uh, Padarpur, one of the places below uh, the line of uh, Maharashtra. So, why is it breaking? Uh, is it better now? There's nothing I'm doing yes, different. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, okay I'll continue. Pandarpur is one of the places beloved by the line of Maharashtra poet saints and a place of great pilgrimage nowadays. It is said that long ago there lived at this spot a youth, Pundalik, who served his aged parents with perfect service. News of this reached Krishna, who with a companion came down from heaven to see and enjoy this devotion. When they got near, the companion said to the youth, see Krishna himself has come to visit you. The youth, tossing a break towards them, answered, can't you see I'm busy with my parents? Tell him to stand on that till I finished fixing them up. Krishna stood on the brick and remains until this day standing there in the temple built around him. As Meher Baba has often said, I become the slave of my devotees. It's a beautiful temple. I made a trip to Pandarpur on the first time I went to Mehrabad. Because I was not aware of the rule that you're not supposed to go anywhere after that. So actually I landed in Mehrabad first ever time with very little knowledge about uh, Baba <laughs> as a tourist. And then when I landed, I already had a four day plan of all the Datta Parampara and Krishna temples around uh, in and around uh, uh, Maharashtra, which I actually did after Mehrabad. So that's my first and last visit to Pandarpur, beautiful temple. So, it's actually, uh, as it's described here, he's standing with his, you might, you might have seen the symbol, he's standing with his 
hands on the hip because he's trying to balance on a brick. That's the uh, imagery and uh, idol. 43-31, I think I already mentioned Ananda Kumaraswamy. Uh, he's talking about the dance of Shiva, the book, and uh, 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 what, the form of uh, Shiva in Chidambaram, which is the, the dancing form. Agni, uh, Hephaestus, Agni is personification of power of fire. And uh, uh, for the Panchalinga, I also sent out a reference on the text messages. I hope uh, everybody saw the five temples and the Panchalinga Shetras that uh, are covered there. City of Spirit, see Chandogya Upanishad in the 10 principal Up Upanishads, translated by Prohit Swami, Faber and Faber. So that's a reference to City of Spirit, 44. 45, one great seclusion. See account of the great seclusion by Ramju Abdullah. So uh, we covered that last weekend. Junaid is 49. Okay, so remember and remind me when we see Junaid, we come back here. Okay, before we start, any thoughts, any questions? Okay. Second. And we were here. So we start with page 48. Baba Ki Jai. Let me get started. So we lost a good 40 minutes. Late start, link issues, and the notes. Apologies on the notes. Uh, I should have been more careful in linking back. Please help me through this process. So now we are looking for the word Junaid, and then we go to notes. Okay, and I have it open right on the other tab. So, yeah, let's get started. Thus, it is that God as man, proclaiming himself as the salvation of men, suffers himself to be persecuted and tortured, to be humiliated and condemned by men, for whose sake his infinite love has made him stoop to man's state, in order that men, by the very act of condemning him, assert his existence in his infinite eternal state. Beautiful, beautiful line. Thus, it is God, it is that God as man, proclaiming himself as the salvation of men, suffers himself to be persecuted and tortured, to be humiliated and condemned by man, by men, for whose sake his infinite love has made him stoop to man's state in order that men, by the very act of condemning him, assert his existence in his infinite, eternal state. The avatar is always one and the same because it is the one same God who manifests in different forms and places to free men from the bondage of the evil. Beautiful, beautiful line. So he talks about how he comes down to the state of man and allows himself to be persecuted and tortured. And in that very act of condemning, he asserting his existence in his infinite eternal state. I continue. In the world, there are saints and many who pass as saints. The saints are not ordinary men, neither are they on the level of God. But God gives them of his powers and they can do Miracles for men, satisfying the passing needs of those who approach them sincerely. But I am not a saint, and to seek benefits from me is to court utter disappointment. Either I am an ordinary man or I am the highest of the high. I am nothing in between. So where is the closure of this quotation mark? So wherever uh, wherever he is using quotation marks, it's obviously Baba's words. So this is from the highest interpretation of the highest of the high message, as we have all uh, uh, as we can recognize. So this is not ending. So there's a editorial uh, blunder apart from this one, where there is a typographic repetition of this word. I think the quotation mark probably ends here and again starts here. I continue. If I am an ordinary man, I cannot do miracles and it is useless to ask me to do them. If I am not an ordinary man and I have assured you I am not a saint, 
I must be the highest of the high. And as such, it is folly to ask me to alter that which I have appointed. If I am the highest of the high, my will is law. My wish governs the law and my love sustains the universe. Rather than ask me to relieve your sufferings, you should lay down your very life at my feet, accepting my guidance. But they cannot obligate me who surrender with selfish motive that which perforce they must surrender one day, life and possession, bargaining these for the treasure of eternal bliss. If I am the highest of the high, my role demands that I strip you all your possessions and wants, consume all your desires, making you desireless rather than satisfying them. Take from you the burden of attachment and ignorance. So this is a loosely used quotation in the sense that it's not verbatim Baba's highest of the high message, but it's significant passages, significant phrases reused and reordered for poetic uh, uh, expression. Is that is that fair? Because uh, uh, I'm sure all of us are familiar with uh, the highest of the high message. That's what is my reading of this. Okay. Yeah, correct. I am not. Yeah. 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 Slight changes are there, but so I continue. I am not for those who stand in rapt admiration before me. I am not for those who ridicule me and point at me with contempt. I am not for the crowds who flock around gazing at me. I am for the few who scattered amongst the crowd silently surrender their all, body, mind, and possessions to me. And still more for those who after surrendering their, surrendering their all, never think of their surrender. They are already mine, who renounce even the very thought of renunciation. Who after surrendering their all, never think of their surrender. They are already mine who renounce even the very thought of renunciation. Beautiful, beautiful lives. Far more blessed is the atheist who confidently and honorably discharges his worldly duties than the man who professes belief in God yet shirks the responsibilities appointed him by divine law and runs after saints, seeking relief from those very sufferings which would ultimately pronounce his eternal liberation. To have one eye glued on the comforts and the pleasures of the world and with the other expect to experience a spark of eternal bliss is impossible and the height of hypocrisy. Please let me know if uh, anybody wants to discuss something. Uh, uh, these are uh, from the highest of the high message, so and, and they're fairly simple, so I'm, keep, I'm uh, going on continuing. You cannot understand now all that I want you to know. It is for me to awaken you from time to time throughout the ages, sowing in your limited minds the seed was, which must in due course germinate, flourish, and bear the fruit of knowledge which is inherently yours. But your own way, though more painful, is also your progress to me, for all progress is mine. If you would be saved that pain, awake now. Be honest with yourself and God. You cannot escape his knowledge. So even those who do not follow are also going to him. But he says, be, uh, uh, be smart and take the, uh, the right path. Seek me not as the highest of the high to take away your troubles, but find me in order to surrender yourself with your whole heart to me. Let my happiness be your cheer and my comforts your rest. Beg me not to save your life, but to permit you to lay down your life at my feet. Never expect me to cure your bodily afflictions, but beseech me to cure your ignorance. 
Never stretch out your hands to receive from me, but hold them high in my praise. I, if I am the highest of the high, uh, yeah. Uh, we missed that reference. Whatever was that, I am not remembering. No, no, we haven't. It's Junaid. I have it. Okay. Okay. Forty-nine. Junaid. Forty-nine. So we are, okay. okay. Yes, yes. Oh, we are oh, coming okay. up to Junaid. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, last stanza. If I am the highest of the high, a wish of my universal will can give in an instant God realization to one and all. But blessed is knowledge gained through the experience of ignorance in accordance with divine law. Knowledge which is possible through perfect guidance and surrenderance to the highest of the high. Thus Baba fulfilled the sayings of the prophets. My glory is like the mountain tops. Before Abraham was I am and encouraged us all to become perfect as is God. Uh, here so, uh, in this stanza, I think you can report, uh, repeat uh, those lines. To save your life, to permit. Uh, never expect me to cure your bodily afflictions by afflictions, not that. Uh, but, uh, here. To save your life, but to uh, let me read the whole thing. Speak me not as the highest of the high to take away your troubles, but find me in order to surrender yourself with your whole heart to me. Let my happiness be your cheer and my comforts your rest. Beg me not to save your life, but to permit you to lay down your life at my feet. Never expect me to cure your bodily afflictions, but beseech me to cure your ignorance. Never stretch out your hands to receive from me, but hold them high in my praise. I continue. If I am the highest of the high, a wish of my universal will can give in an instant God realization to one and all. But Blessed is knowledge gained through the experience of ignorance in accordance with law. Knowledge. Yeah, I think uh, this, this passage uh, has a lot of message. If I am the highest of the high, a wish of my universal will can give in an instant God realization to one and all. So we always sometimes think why God is making all of us suffer like this. He can in one flash. Uh, Take us all out of this, uh, uh, say, uh, quagmire Misery. under which we are here. Yes. But blessed Misery. is the knowledge that gained through the experience of ignorance in accordance with the divine law. Knowledge is establishing is through perfect. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Knowledge which is possible through perfect guidance and surrenderance. To the highest of the high. So he wants us to go through the path with all of our uh, say effort in uh, acquiring knowledge gained through experience of ignorance in accordance with the divine law. So Perfect. what is that so he's establishing? Law? He's establishing the supremacy of the divine law, which is as we know, a hierarchy of laws, uh, including the law of karma, law of nature, and so on. So he's establishing the fact that if the if using his ability as the highest of the high, he's giving anybody instant God realization, which he can, he's actually going against uh, divine law. And by this phrase, divine he's law. saying, no, I respect, I respect divine law. And the root of knowledge, which is got gained through the experience of ignorance, is supreme. And that's the best. And he says, which is possible through perfect guidance, guidance through a perfect master, and surrenderance to the highest of the high. Thus, Baba, now, now Francis says, thus Baba fulfilled the sayings of the prophets. My glory is like the mountain tops. Before Abraham was I am. So I think these two phrases are from either Bible 
uh, I mean Bible and uh, most most likely Bible, and encouraged us also to become perfect as is God. Is this a footnote or is this? Oh no no, this is a stanza. So this is a uh, uh, section section. So this is a section, section that's section. ending. Yeah, this is a section that's ending, and this is the next stanza. So my glory is like the mountain tops. Maybe this is biblical. Uh, and then before Abraham was I am. Okay, next. Uh, so that finishes off the section which uh, uh, talks uh, uh, about uh, uh, Baba's highest of the high message. It starts, I think, with uh, the musts, and uh, then it went to the uh, uh, seclusion. I mean, not seclusion, the new life, and then finished with the highest of the high message and now we go to the next uh, section i think the last of the first book baba sahavas the company of god but who but god can keep god company elijah walked with god which means he was one with him radha knew his embrace because, because she was his own loveliness but the saints Talk with him, are him, in as much as Junaid pointed out to the insolent disciple. They exercise the powers of God in the earth. But these were not at Meherabad, November 55, when for each week of the month, 250 men enjoyed Baba's company. So now he's setting the stage for the Sahavas. And that's where he brings in Junaid, the insolent disciple. And now let's go to the note. Junaid is a perfect master in Arabia in the 10th century. He cited the obedience of Abraham, the patience of Job, the symbol, symbolism of Zacharias, the wearing of wool by Moses, the strangerhood of John the Baptist, the homelessness of Jesus, and the poverty of Muhammad as being excellent attributes of Sufism and models for aspirants to seek to emulate. He also declared that spirituality was wholly manner, morals in the real sense of the right relationship in every relation. The right, exactly correct relationship with one's fellow men and with God. See Kashf al Majub. Translated by uh, R. A. Nicholson, Luzak and Co. So this is a specific perfect master in Arabia. Now, I'm assuming Baba has said Junaid is a perfect master because uh, I am sure Francis would not be classifying anybody uh, as a perfect master uh, by himself. So this also gets added to the list of uh, perfect masters that you heard of. So he had a particular. Uh, uh, teaching which was about uh, reference to biblical characters and specific aspects of their lives. Homelessness of Jesus, symbolism of uh, Zacharias, the strangerhood of John the Baptist, whatever. Right. So that's what Junaid is about. So next page we have threshold. OK, we'll come back at threshold. Okay. There were First of all, the disciples, heaven sprung, purely birthed, in a gain birth of service, which will quit them of service. Mature men who breakfast on couplets of hafiz and have wine served with every meal. Mature men drunken irreproachably. Precise in action, in wit and outwit as bearings and piston or propeller shaft in his act of acting. Their lives pouring as rivers into his ocean. Heaven sprung, God returning. Uh, I would imagine this is uh, about the Sahavas. Let me read it again and let's see if we make more sense. There were, first of all, the disciples. This is Mandli. Heaven sprung. Purely birth. In again birth of service, which will quit them 
of service. So they are again in this birth of service, which will end all service and give them uh, God realization because the Mandli was supposedly either getting God realization in this birth or at max another one. Mature men who breakfast on couplets of hafiz and have wine served in the meal. Wine, of course, is the grain grace of Baba. Mature men drunken irreproachably. Precise in action, in wit, an outwit, pens and piston or propeller shaft in his act of acting. Their lives pouring as rivers into his ocean, heaven sprung, God returning. I yeah, get a better understanding on the second read. So he's basically describing the mandali. He's saying that they are uh, they are enjoying their meals with the wine of uh, uh, divine grace and the couplets of Hafiz. Mm. They are very precise in action and he uses an industrial uh, analogy. He says, as bearings and piston or propeller shaft in his act of acting. Baba is only acting. Uh, actually, he's living it. Perfect master's act. In his act of acting, then lives pouring as rivers into his ocean. So their individuality is also getting into the ocean. Heaven sprung, God returned. Any thoughts on this? Any other ways of understanding this? Okay, then I continue. Second, there were the thousand guests of God divided into four convenient language groups of one week each. The Hindi speaking ones from Bihar and Uttar Pradesh and Delhi, and as far north as Rishikesh. The men from Andhra who speak Telugu, the men from Bombay speaking Gujarati, and the men descended from Shivaji's men speaking Marathi, comprising all classes and creeds and temperaments which were laid aside and forgotten. So the only division here was language. All the rest was forgotten. And he's talking about uh, the groupings by week for the Sahabas with Baba. And I think this was greatly and vividly covered, if you remember, uh, uh, which was so realistic and making us all emotional uh, about uh, the scenes that uh, Don Stevens describes in uh, Listen to Humanity, the first part of the book. So that's what's happening here. Or poured together into a heart lake of his reflection. They were clustered leaves on his bow, rustling in his breeze, or bees pouring after their queen on her swarming flight leading them to a new home or skipping lambs before his shepherding to the pastures and clear streams of him. Children before his all father mother bounty and security. But the disciples were as so many stars to his moon, moons to his eternal sun, signposts to the reality of him. Beautiful analogies. There were leaves on his bow, rustling in his bee breeze. They were like a heart lake. They were like bees around a queen bee swarming around. They were like skipping lambs uh, around uh, him uh, with pastures which had clear streams again of him. Children before his all father mother. Children before one who is the father and the mother and who gives, who represents two things. Bounty, bounty is uh, unlimited uh, just unlimited uh, wealth, unlimited material stuff and security. Something that we look to our parents for, bounty and security. But the disciples were as so many stars to his moon. They were like stars to a moon. They were only stars when you see the moon. Moon is obviously more grander. But then he goes on further and says, 
even the moons if you take them to be moons then he became the sun moons to his eternal sun they were merely sign posts to the reality of him so all of these disciples act as a sign post to the reality of him and the hundreds of villagers and farmers who rumbled and tinkled by in bullock carts or padded along silently on bare feet that scarcely disturbed the dust and their gray-eyed and laughing children who greeted one in the name of god and the boy across the paddocks drawing water with bullocks ordering their going and halting along and the flow of lovely water from the cool well depth with a musical call that was also a prayer to god in the burning sunlight so he is uh, uh describing the scene of mehrabad bullock carts tinkling and rumbling uh the the, the 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 everybody greets each other with jai baba so who greeted one in the name of god and uh, there are laughing children and water is being drawn by bullocks and uh, beautiful sweet water coming from deep wells and also there's a call for music in the burning sunlight so there's aarti that's happening and a prayer to god in the burning sunlight so it's also pretty warm so now comes the hero the hero is introduced beside these there was one so how many did he say there are he said there are thousand people that came to the sarvas now he says besides these there was one john kerry an irish english australian in his 49th year threshold according to hindu hindu classical and sufi reckoning of old age this is again the reference that uh, uh tota mentioned where uh, after that stage you are basically in a sanyas kind of ashram of of old age there for the whole month so he was there for the whole month of the sarvas four times as long on account of concrete roads which walked in his sleep and deadened the feet of his spirit for dance and machines which whirled in his dreams making the hands of his soul inept at grasping the real now again uh, from i think listen humanity we saw that it was only don stevens and uh, um francis among the westerners that were expected to stay right through the four weeks otherwise it was very clear you finish your uh, one week Uh, as part of your language group and you leave and then the next language group stays there so 250 250 250 250 so it was only both of them that uh, were there right through and obviously there was a purpose because they are able to write so beautifully in prose and poetry about uh, the event so yeah so he's talking about uh, he's introducing john kerry and if you re- re- uh, remember john kerry is nothing but the pen name of francis himself so the next love song the next part of the book is written as though it's john kerry's love song to baba so he's just introducing john kerry in the last part right so i'll continue oh wait a minute we forgot baba ji you forgot 5031 threshold of old age the classical hindu life of a man is childhood studentship householder and at 50 years renunciation the sufis divided into 0 to 28 youth 28 to 56 middle age 56 to 84 old age so that's the last para now 50 31 so this is 31 so this is 31 and the next one is 30 Four fifty-four thirty-four. Okay, so let's keep going. Just remember fifty-four thirty-four, and a key word is uh, Esau. Esau, Jesus. Yeah. The flash of God is instant. His lightnings are sudden, but the hammers of the sun are slow 
in shaping a man in the likeness of a man slower still in shaping him in the likeness of god seven years and seven years for a bride of loveliness seven years and three times seven years for john to meet the lord of his search 28 years of sun beat and rain beat and one month of the sun fingers of baba wiping away some of the stains of the dream so these are all uh, uh, biblical references and uh, ward uh, uh, talks about it so he says uh, this is john's marriage and i think uh, he was asked to wait uh, for 14 years and at the 14th year uh, jesus told him to wait another seven if i remember right so that's what he says here seven years and seven years for a bride of lovel- uh, loveliness seven years and three times seven years for john to meet the lord of his search so after his uh, uh, marriage in the biblical reference i think he gets closer to uh, god 28 years of sun beat and rain beat and one one month of the sun fingers of baba wiping away of the stains of the dream now uh, last here, two lines i think the last yeah, two lines yeah. here refers to john kerry i think given uh, it's 28 years since he came to baba and yeah correct you're right of sun beat and rain beat and one month of the sun fingers oh yeah you're right yeah, that so is the one sahavas. month is referring to the sahavas so sahavas of the sun fingers of baba wiping away some some of the stains of the dream fantastic right so 28 years of the sun beat and rain beat and one month of the sun fingers of baba so baba has sun uses his fingers and wipes away some of the stains of the dream beautiful for baba was sun of no sun beat during the days of this month sun of sun love gentle and radiant as in spring and the hearts of all men and creatures open in wonder at his shining and at the earth dressed in her green dress embroidered with white and gold flowers and men's hearts are stirred with high adventure days of wonder singing at his presence and laughter and sudden silence and weeping for him beloved master and friend again uh, reference to what everybody feels about baba heart music soul in clear singing of song beginning as in the dawn of time when the stars sang song of instruments and voices trained in love singing in which god was praised and love's states described and baba's life story set forth love singing of love and listened to by love the song of his silence spoken by his faithful interpreter as discourses reminiscences storytelling and encouragements so there was music there was satsang there was uh, voices trained in love singing in which god was praised and love's states described and baba's life story set forth so all the arthis and the songs which describe baba's life love singing of love and listen to by love baba is also listening to it the song of his silence spoken by his faithful interpreter so in all this there was also the song of the silence of baba and eruch was uh, described here as faithful interpreter as discourses reminiscences storytelling and encouragements so he'll appreciate something he'll tell a story he obviously gave the discourses which is the second part of listen humanity and then you had the reminiscences he remembered episodes which he talked about beautiful explained to them love and the ways of love took them for walks round mehrabad and mehrazad showing them particular spots of seclusion and where he had worked with his beloved mas through arangao with the village band leading the way where people worshiped him 
explained love and love's way to them, ways to them. Wash the feet of a thousand poor, bowing his head to their feet, being the poorest and gave each money. Explain love's ways, being himself of love. So he this again describes what happens there. Uh, he goes around Mehrabad and Mehrazad, shows places where he did his seclusion and worked with the mass, went in a procession with the village band leading him in Arangao, and uh, he washed the uh, feet of a thousand poor, and he says, being the poorest, because Baba always never touched money, so he, he touched money only to deal with uh, uh, arms being given to the poor. And he says, he being the poorest gave everybody money, and in the process, explained love's ways, being himself love. A symbol of love, uh, representation, manifestation of love is explaining to the world love's ways. Explained the way of love from beginning to end. There is nothing but God. From eternity to eternity, we are all one. An eternal, indivisible ocean of oneness. But we do not know this. Being crops of I am myself in the spray of a wave caused by his whim for knowledge of himself. But when our precious human consciousness focused now falsely on our bubble of a body realizes who we are, we will know that we, each one of us, is the whole ocean. So this is again a beautiful line. But when our precious human consciousness focused now falsely on our own bubble of a body realizes who we are, we will know that we, each one of us, is the whole ocean. Right. So I continue. In a room, one is conscious of its dimensions and of the objects and other people in it. Which time do we have? Yeah, uh, and other people in it. If one goes outside, consciousness can take in the surrounding countryside and sky. If one climbs a hill, a vast panorama can come within the range of consciousness, which remains the same consciousness as the person is still the same person, but its scope and nature has changed. So, when our consciousness bursts its bo bubble body identification, it becomes conscious of, its, of itself as ocean. I'll read this again. In a room, one is conscious of its dimensions and of the objects and other people in it. If one goes outside, consciousness can take in the surrounding countryside and sky. If one climbs a hill, a vast panorama can come within the range of consciousness, which remains the same consciousness as the person is still the same person. But its scope and nature has changed. So when our consciousness bursts its bubble, bo bubble body identification, it becomes conscious of itself as ocean. I continue. We breathe. And the moment we stop breathing, we are said to be dead. Our life hangs on the thread of our breath, and yet at every moment we forget it. Yet it goes on, and all night when we sleep, stitching and holding the parts and functions of the body intact, only when out of breath or ill do we remember it, and only when we are drowning or suffocating do we unmistakably know that no breath means no life. And breath and life are one and the same thing. A lot of emphasis on the breath being the key element that uh, shows the existence of life, but we kind of take it for granted. We live yet scarcely conscious that our life is breath, and infinitely more precious than breath is love for God. By breath, we remain alive in what is called life. But love for God is the means by which we realize that our very being is God. Our breath 
and our life are nothing but a manifestation in illusion of our eternal existence not until we are being deprived of breath do we value life not until we are being strangled by love do we know we cannot live without god this is also a very beautiful line by breath we remain alive in what is called life but love for god is the means by which we realize that our very being is god like this line our own infinitude leaves no room for anything to exist outside of us this earth and the innumerable universes are but empty bubbles within the divine ocean of our being dependent upon our consciousness we are filled with wonder at the earth sky light sound but they are not there when we sleep soundly from our waking we pass through dream to sleep and from sleep through dreams to waking in sound sleep nothing of our wonder nor fear nor hopes were there this is also a very beautiful single line our infinitude leaves leaves no room for anything to exist outside of us so if we really acknowledge that it is infinitude infinitude cannot have an outside infinitude right so it has to be all encompassing that's the point he's making and then he yes, describes sir, you, uh, uh, you can mark this next two lines also this earth and yeah. innumerable universes are but the empty bubbles within the divine ocean of our being dependent on upon our consciousness our consciousness so only a so if we have been filled with wonder at the earth sky light and sound but they are not there when we sleep soundly so in sound sleep all of them are not there from our waking we pass through dream to sleep and from sleep through dreams to waking god speaks in sound sleep nothing of our wonder nor fears nor hopes were there so it's again what we have learned in uh, god speaks that uh, in the sound sleep state you know everything is in suspension in sound sleep we pass into our original divine unity but do not know it because it's not conscious we wake and are conscious only of the illusion of our own creation a shadow of the oneness of our real existence to remain awake in sleep is to realize ourselves as god and to experience infinite power immeasurable knowledge and unfathomable bliss by us it is impossible to obtain this experience by having the courage to become to become annihilate of ourselves by the living master's grace we attain it i'll read this again in sound sleep we pass into our original divine unity but do not know it we wake and are conscious only of the illusion of our own creation the shadow of the oneness of our real existence to remain awake in sleep is to realize ourselves as god and to experience infinite power immu- immeasurable knowledge and unfathomable bliss by us it is impossible to obtain this experience by having the courage to become annihilate of ourselves by the living master's grace we attain it so by us it is impossible to obtain this experience but we need to have the courage to annihilate ourselves and also have the living master's grace to be able to attain this so here yes. no, annihilate ourselves is to go beyond the gross subtle or the mental planes yeah burst the bubble yeah yeah you are living in the bubble burst the bubble yeah so continuing we are caught within the bindings of the tangled skein of wants 
whether we want food or want god want god with all comforts or all comforts without god i is there wanting before the beginning of all beginnings there was no i only god was unconscious of himself then arose the whim who am i thus the most original want came into being and that went that want let loose on the ocean of his being a storm of drops each drop although of the indivisible ocean was now a separate i and forgot its want of self knowledge and only remembered i want through the mineral vegetable and animal kingdoms the wants multiplied and the i of the drops magnified until after countless cycles of time the original want i want to know myself is remembered by us this want can only be satisfied by our i diminishing and ultimately disappearing into our infinite self so the whole journey of uh, beyond beyond to uh, involution is described in these two stanzas very beautifully i continue but now as soon as the path to self knowledge has begun the i runs the risk of being magnified all the more i am advancing i am enlightened it says therefore one must be ever watchful until the i and all its bindings actually begin to be burned in the fire of divine love and ultimately by the grace of the master the bindings are all destroyed and the i answers once and for all its question who am i with the answer i am god It's talking about spiritual ego and uh, uh, in this paragraph and then says that also needs to be burned and the burnt in the fire of divine love so maybe i'll stop here and uh, yeah. open it up for any thoughts any questions soma ravi what's going yeah. on <laughs> you've been listening <laughs> <laughs> good information uh is there any specific reference to what transpired in the sahwas i don't think so but uh, what do you mean so the sahwas was uh, uh, don stevens covers it very beautifully in this this new variety right so he says yes, yes, every yes, morning yes. the crowds came the crowds came to those pandals and then there was uh, different programs with some time dedicated to discourses by baba both before lunch and after lunch and then it was time to leave every evening around dusk time for baba so baba used to go back to mehrazad but the people used to stay back in the uh, mehrabad area and so on and so forth is that is that the kind of information you're looking for or something more detailed no 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 the messages that baba gave in the sahwa that's in the second part that's in the second part of listening humanity so the first ah. part is more a historical account written by don stevens yes, which is again very very uh, well done very flowery and very uh, uh, you know bringing it to life and then the second part is a collection of essays collection of yes. discourses uh, on uh, uh, all of which were given in that samas no the way here uh, it is portrayed here was there some sort of a flow of thought in the whole of uh, sahawas program as baba uh, put it across uh, i don't know i don't uh, understand as such so if we need to read it once again or things once like again, that yeah, to find so, yeah. from the first uh, say message to the last message what's the pattern was there what's the trail of thought uh, continuity or was it all 
different each time or something like that. Good exercise. Yeah. What what was the predominant theme? What was what was he trying to convey? And uh, how do all those independent messages bring together that theme? Yeah, that's a good uh, exercise. Okay. okay. So on that note, okay. we can wrap up and uh, come back uh, tomorrow. It's the same link. I will go back and check uh, what happened to the pinning. Why it's not pinned? Yes. Because yeah, I'll I'll pin it again and hope it stays there. And also, how to open this page in the uh, uh, Teams uh, uh, library? That is still a difficulty for me. Okay, so let's do that first thing tomorrow morning. So we yeah, will yes. uh, we will again do that uh, quick. Uh, uh, in fact. Be ready to those of you who want to really do this on their desktops. Be on your desktops, not on your uh, uh, phones, yeah. because that's where you'll do serious reading. So be on your desktops, yeah. and uh, I can share screens. I can even get into your screen and help you uh, do this for the first few minutes tomorrow. Yeah, that's okay. a very good question. It has always been my, you know, difficulty. I open Teams, <laughs> but I do not know who, which one to link. So I saved in that a Word document. So I click that. Okay. That's how I connected to the link. If we have the same thing in the Teams itself, uh, that would be great. Let's do that tomorrow. Let's, let's okay. move it up. I, yep. All right. Have a great uh, day, everybody, and uh, enjoy the first half of the weekend. And uh, let's see you all tomorrow. Your weekend is barely starting, Ravi. Get drunk, enjoy, and see you tomorrow. Today is ending. <laughs> Today. No, your your weekend is not even started. That's what I'm saying. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Friday night. Yeah. All right. Take care now. Have a good. Jai Baba. Jai Baba, everybody. <laughs>